So One Piece chapter 1062 is out and we start off the chapter with the Straw Hats and Vegapunk. So as we'd have expect, Frankie is just, you know, over the moon to finally meet Vegapunk because he really looked up to him and he spent those two years at Vegapunk's homeland. Then we also have Usopp who's also really excited to see Vegapunk because of the cool giant robot. He actually says it's his giant robot of his dream. But one of the most important parts is actually Zoro. So Zoro wants Vegapunk to do him a favor and this is really weird because Zoro hasn't really shown any interest in Vegapunk. He just wants to be the world's greatest swordsman. But I think there's kind of a good reason for it. So if you go back to Punk Hazard and the children. So we know that these experiments were done by Caesar and at the end of the arc, Tashigi and Smoker went to go take these children to Vegapunk to try and reverse the effects of this gigantification. And in the previous chapter, we saw it actually worked. So Zoro knowing this knowledge, he might also think, you know what, Caesar made these smile devil fruits. We see the side effects there at Ibisu Town, which Zoro has like a really good connection with. So I think the favor Zoro might want to ask is, can Vegapunk reverse the effects of the smile devil fruits? And this would actually fit really nice with the arc. So if we jump all the way to the end, we actually find out that CP0 was tasked to assassinate Vegapunk because the world government doesn't want him there anymore. So what better place to hide Vegapunk at the end of the arc than tell him, you know what, go to Wano. That's one of our allied countries. It's under our protection. The borders are closed. Nobody would go there. They're just too scared because they don't know how powerful the samurai are. And while you're there, you can also reverse the effects of the smile devil fruits to all the people that were affected. I think that's a really cool way to get Vegapunk as a friend and an ally to the Straw Hats and also, you know, help the people of Ebisu Town. Okay, so now that that's down, let's go back to the beginning. So this Vegapunk is not the original. This is 02 and we find out later in the chapter there's six different Vegapunks. So this Vegapunk is Vegapunk Evil and the name is Lilith. I'm not sure about the pronunciation, but that's how it looked. And this one is more of like you know that pirate life you know let's plunder get the resources and then do our research because you see that punk 01 which is named shaka was like listen here where's your scientist pride you know and let us was no science pride that doesn't get you money and then shaka actually says listen here you're actually underestimating your opponents these are yonko crew this is zoro with over a billion berry bounty and then you got your devil chat both can kill you in an instant and his logic. So he was able to assess the situation properly and tell this person, listen here, this is not somebody you want to mess with. These people can kill you right then and there. And then Lilith goes on to say, but what about our sea monster weapons? We can take, it, we can take them down with that. And then he's like, no, not even with that. These people are calm. They already assess the situation and realize that they can take you down but you have not done the same and we end off this section with shaka actually saying i also have an interest in the straw hat crew so clearly we're setting up to a whole vegapunk alliance so then now we move on to luffy and his crew with bonnie and i like this contrast with you know bonnie in the previous chapter she was going on with luffy like how can you be so nonchalant don't you know what island this is you know being very mature about the situation but then the second she says food she goes to luffy level you know of just oh food i just want to eat and all that reason and logic goes out the window i really enjoyed that and we also get a nice tidbit that bonnie knows that you know luffy and sabo are brothers she says oh i met sabo maybe i'll tell him that later and so luffy and genga actually inside the island and they find these holograms and they meet punk 06 and then Punk 06 actually just punches Luffy because he thought that she's a hologram. So he punched her and then she got irritated and punched him back. And then he hits a machine and this machine just brings out a whole lot of food. And then Bonnie, Chopper, Luffy, they just go wild. Vegapunk's like, yeah, this is my machine that can make 500 meals in like a minute. So, you know, knock yourselves out. And then she gets irritated because if she had enough funding, she could mass produce this, you know, and give it to the entire world. And we, we also find out about the island aircon. So this thing actually changes the whole climate of the island. And if they had enough funding, it could also affect the weather. 
Now this is pretty cool because maybe now you could also get an upgrade to a claim attack because you know Vegapunk knows how to manipulate weather and you know Nami's claim attack is all about manipulating weather. This arc is really ramping up to be not the main straw hats, you know, the Monster Trio, Luffy, but more so the support characters, Nami, Usopp, Frankie, Chopper. They seem to be like the main focus on, on this and I think they're really going to come out of this arc with a lot of power ups and upgrades. So we actually find out that Vegapunk doesn't actually want to work for the government, but rather Vegapunk is just going to the place that pays the most and that's why he's with the government because Punk 06 actually says I'm the genius scientist for hire, Vegapunk. Obviously this is the fan translations, not the official. When we get the official, we'll get concrete answer to whether or not Vegapunk is actually just going where the money leads. And I believe this is true because when we move to the end of the chapter with CP0, they are there to assassinate Vegapunk. So clearly, the Gorosei Im Sama, they don't trust Vegapunk. So we see CP0 is coming with a Seraphim Kuma, we find out this is a kid kuma but you know the hair is not white it's still black so i'm pretty sure it's a cyborg version because even the eyes there's no pupils it's just blank so i'm pretty sure this is like a cyborg version seraphim of kuma because kuma was his most powerful when he was a cyborg not really when he was human and then luchi is like is this connected to the lucia kingdom them being destroyed and then now we want to kill vegapunk and stasi is like you know better than to ask questions so clearly this weapon that was used on the Lucia Kingdom was made by Vegapunk and this could be sort of like creating a new ancient weapon. We do know that Shira Hoshi, she's a human, a mermaid princess is born and then they become the ancient weapon Poseidon. We don't know about Uranus, we don't know about Pluton, we always assumed it was a ship until Wano happened and then you know it's like Pluton is sleeping and once the borders of an open Pluton will be released. So is it a ship or is it something living? So if it is a ship, that means that an ancient weapon can be created. But also, even if it was a living thing, we see Vegapunk sort of theme in this chapter, like what Punk 02 is taking living things and making them into machines. We see that with the sea monster weapons. We see that with that giant robot, which actually looks like a real giant that became a robot because of the eyes that it has. And then also that shark, which had very living movements, even though it was a robot. So could the world government be trying to create weapons at the level of the ancient weapons so that they can fight against, you know, Poseidon, Uranus, Pluton, because they don't have, from what we know, two of the ancient weapons. They could have Uranus, they could not, but they really need something of the caliber to actually fight against, you know, Shirahoshi and Pluton or even Uranus if they don't have it. So this is really important that, you know, Vegapunk could create something that's an ancient weapon level. But anyway, that's my thoughts on this chapter. Comment below what you thought about this chapter. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if you didn't. Subscribe for more One Piece content and I'll see you guys in my next video.